to determine the equations of any asymptotes and then graph the function. Let's start by determining the vertical asymptotes. The vertical asymptotes occur at the zeros of the denominator as long as they're not also zeros of the numerator. So if we set x minus 4 equal to 0, we can determine the equation of the vertical asymptote. If we add 4 to both sides, we have x equals 4, which is the equation of our vertical asymptote. Let's go ahead and sketch that. Now to determine the horizontal asymptote, we need to determine the limit of the function as x approaches positive infinity or negative infinity. Let's see what happens as the function approaches positive infinity. Well, there's a shortcut method for determining this limit. If the degree of the numerator and denominator are the same, then the limit is going to be equal to the ratio of the leading coefficients which in this case would be 2 over 1, which is equal to 2. So the horizontal asymptote of this function would be y equals 2. So now let's go ahead and sketch that. So now to graph this function, we need several more points, which we'll find by completing a t-table. Let's start by letting x equals 0. If x is 0, we'd have 0 over negative 4, so y would be 0. So this function passes through the origin, which should be right here, which should also be the x and y intercept. So now we know from this point the graph approaches the horizontal and vertical asymptotes. But let's go ahead and determine some additional points. Let's let x equal 2. If x equals 2, our numerator would be 4, and our denominator would be negative 2. 4 divided by negative 2 is equal to negative 2. So here's one more point we can plot to graph the function. 2, negative 2 would be here. And notice how just these two points alone is enough information to graph this piece of the function. It's going to pass through these two points and approach the asymptotes. So it might look something like this. But we still need to determine additional points over here on the right side of the graph. So let's try letting x equal 6. If we let x equal 6, we would have 12 in our numerator and 2 in our denominator. And 12 divided by 2 is equal to 6. So the point 6, 6 is on our function, which would be right here. Let's go ahead and determine one more point. Let's let x equal 8. If x is equal to 8, we'd have 16 in the numerator and then 4 in the denominator. 16 divided by 4 is equal to 4. So the point 8, 4 is on the function, which would be right here. So the function must pass through these two points and approach the vertical and horizontal asymptotes. So it's going to look something like this piece here, but over here in the upper right-hand corner. And there we have our graph. So once we determine the horizontal and vertical asymptotes, it's just a matter of selecting convenient values of x to determine additional points on the function. And then knowing the graph is going to approach the asymptotes makes graphing most rational functions fairly straightforward.